Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. One of Australia's greatest cricketers, fast bowler Max Walker, has died from melanoma. The man, known as Tangles for his seemingly awkward style, played 34 tests for Australia and has been mourned by the cricketing community. Tributes are flowing for the affable sportsman, commentator and all-round nice guy. Former teammates among those offering condolences. The Tasmanian-born Walker died this morning after a two-year battle with melanoma. There's no doubt that's all in, in, uh, in the community generally, but particularly the, the cricket community will miss him dearly. Cricket may have never been graced by Walker had he stuck with football. He played 94 games for Melbourne over six years in the VFL. Comprehensively beaten and bowled there by Walker. He always spoke so, so fondly about the baggy green and the effect of the baggy green and representing your country. Max Walker played 38 tests for Australia in the late 70s and 80s. He made his test debut in 1973 and took 138 wickets alongside the likes of Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson. When his cricket career ended nine years later, Walker went on to become one of Australia's most infectious sporting personalities. And that's why I call him a great Australian because he just had so many other strings to his bow. Such amazing for one bloke to be able to be so gifted in, in so many areas. He was awarded an Order of Australia for services to cricket. But it was his Aussie larrikinism that endeared him to many. Have a good weekend, Mr Walker. You too, son. The cricketing community will turn out in force for the fast bowler's funeral. Jacob Miley, QUT News. A report released today shows Queensland's Great Barrier Reef is in good shape for now. But it also warns of certain environmental issues that could have long-lasting impacts if action isn't taken in the near future. The report is the federal government's sustainable plan for the reef. It was produced after a request from the World Heritage Committee. And while the 2050 plan says the reef is in good shape, many others disagree. The report actually failed um, to really um, properly address um, the impacts of water quality and, uh, the, and the funds that need to be committed to actually achieving good water quality, um, which has been recommended by scientists. The report claims delays in passing tougher tree clearing laws in Queensland have put the reef at risk. Labor, however, says it is acting on that. It suggests that while the rest of the world is making steps to reduce its carbon pollution to address global warming, Queensland is on a trajectory to increase our emissions by an incredible 35% uh, to 2030. Biologists say research and awareness is a vital to protect Australia's natural heritage. It is vital. Now only 2% of the ocean as a whole is fully protected. While governments delaying their actions, conservationists say that we have little time left to save the Great Barrier Reef and that we must act now. But with so much disagreement about this report alone, that seems unlikely. Chandra Pusparini, QUT News. The federal government has defended its decision to dump a planned 32.5% tax on backpacker workers. But Queensland's farming industry may have already been damaged. The deal means working backpackers will now be taxed at 19% from their first dollar earned. Overseas travellers visiting Brisbane have applauded the decrease. It's pretty good that it's gone down now, so obviously we can, more we earn, we can keep more of what we're earning. Others still aren't impressed with the above average tax rate. We're doing like, a lot of hard work by doing like farm work, for example, and you know to be taxed that much is quite, I think it's quite high. With backpackers making up 25% of Australia's farming workforce, the reduced tax has come as a welcome change to Queensland's agricultural sector. Regional Queensland has always been a hotspot for working travellers, with farmers reporting up to 75% reliance on backpacker labour. Earning an average of $22 an hour, the LNP government says our higher wages still make us competitive. The 19% rate, uh, although it might be slightly higher than New Zealand and Canada, it, when you look at actual take-home pay because we pay them more, their net take-home amount is more. Critics say it's too late for the current season. The damage has already been done because there are uh, literally thousands of backpackers from around the world who won't be coming to Australia this summer. The decision is expected to attract more travellers to rural areas, but the farming industry still has to deal with this season's shortfall. Madison Keenan, QUT News. 
Brisbane City Council has opened the public consultation process for Brisbane's proposed subway station. The Lord Mayor says the metro project from Woolloongabba to Hurston is essential to keeping Brisbane commuters moving. Two out of three Brisbane commuters rely on our bus system, but it is stretched to the limit. Lord Mayor Graham Quirk says a metro subway is crucial to prevent Brisbane grinding to a halt. The thing is, if we keep pouring more and more buses onto the network, the delays for bus commuters are going to get longer. The proposed seven kilometre route from Hurston to Bullangabba would also utilise the southeast and inner northern busways. With proposed services every two minutes, Brisbane Metro will move up to 30,000 people an hour. This is how this Council is selling its Metro subway vision. A business case for the project is expected to cost $16 million and be completed by May next year. Ratepayers will have to foot the bill. Public transport experts and public transport advocates uh, right around Brisbane um, have all agreed that this is not the right project to do. He supports alternative options. There is a, another option uh, that's there that will provide a whole lot of new public transport infrastructure and that's light rail uh, for Brisbane. But the Lord Mayor insists this metro is the only answer. Community information sessions will run from the 12th to the 29th of October, held in several locations including here in the Queen Street Mall. Members of the public are encouraged to attend these consultations to have a say before the project progresses any further. Ailish Rees, QUT News. Aviation Australia has opened a state-of-the-art facility at Brisbane Airport to train commercial pilots, cabin crew and aircraft engineers. The new expansion includes a very realistic helicopter flight simulator. Brisbane Airport sees 22 million passengers a year and is acknowledged as a world-class facility. Today, it became even better when Attorney General Yvette Darth opened a new education campus. Brisbane Airport Corporation funded the $10 million facility as it strives to make the airport Brisbane's economic hub. The facility will help students put theory into practice and develop their skills in a hands-on environment. One student hopes to follow in her father's footsteps and become a maintenance engineer on military choppers. It helps an absolute lot being able to come out here and put it into real life experience and practical instead of just death by PowerPoint. <laughs> the most exciting addition is a huge helicopter simulator which is being praised as the best of its kind in the world. It, it replicates the aircraft 100% um, in both uh, sight, sound and movement. So it means that we can give extremely complex scenarios to, to pilots and crews and, uh, and, and give them more realistic training. Brisbane Airport is trying to encourage more school leavers to enter the aviation industry and train locally. Previously, pilots would have to travel to Italy or Malaysia to access this kind of simulator, but now they will come from across the globe, putting Brisbane on the world aviation map. The facility is expected to train an extra 500 students per year. Laura Rowan, QT News. South Australia has been bracing throughout the day for the worst storms in 70 years. The Weather Bureau has forecast floods and winds as high as 90 kilometres an hour. South Australian residents have prepared for the worst. The forecast winds are just below hurricane strength and likely to be the strongest in half a century. Heavy rain has been falling this afternoon with predictions of widespread flooding. The areas around Adelaide, the Mount Lofty Ranges and the Mid-North may be facing up to 100 millimetres of rain over the next two days. I am so on edge, it's not even funny. Yep, I'm really worried. Yeah, it's OK. It's uh, wears you out a bit, but uh, we'll get there. The state has already been ravaged by floods, with rain sodden ground unable to take much more. And in New South Wales, the town of Forbes is also expecting more rain and flooding. It was declared a natural disaster zone over the weekend when rising water destroyed 70% of farming crops. Dominic Shamillan, QUT News. The New South Wales government is scrambling in a bid to counter a major shark problem on the state's far north coast. It comes after a spate of attacks at Ballina's Lighthouse Beach. This is the shot of the 49th shark tagged off Lighthouse Beach this morning with the image shared on Twitter. 17-year-old surfer Cooper Allen is still recovering in Lismore Base Hospital after being bitten on the thigh on Monday. Today, New South Wales Primary Industries Minister Niall Blair 
flew to Ballina to discuss implementing a shark mitigation strategy. The most recent attack is just one of seven in the area over the past nine months. Queensland is offering its help. I'm happy to send our experts down to New South Wales. This is about helping a friend, it's about helping families and it's about, above all, our paramount is human safety. Drone surveillance and drum lines have been suggested as the most effective methods to minimise shark attacks. But locals are divided on what action should be taken. Some don't want to do anything to harm the sharks. Others, like former Prime Minister and keen surfer Tony Abbott, want to introduce culling. Patrick Goddard, QT News. Rugby League's best player for the 2016 season will be honoured at the Delhi M Awards tonight. And Queensland's own Jonathan Thurston is in line for what would be his fifth title. Last year, the Cowboys captain was named the league's best player for a record fourth time. The 33-year-old was a popular pick at the start of the season and remains in contention for the top honour this year. He sat in ninth before voting went behind closed doors after round 17 in July. Melbourne Storm duo Cooper Cronk and Cameron Smith are also firm favourites. Cronk is preparing for his sixth grand final against the Cronulla Sharks this weekend. Sharks captain Paul Gallen has decided to give the awards a miss, citing a need to rest a decade-old back injury. In the AFL, the Swans have received a boost ahead of Saturday's grand final. Callum Mills and Jared McVie are both expected to take to the field while Aaliyah Aaliyah missed training and remains a doubt. You certainly give them, uh, the guys, the best opportunity and the most opportunity that they can to, to prove themselves fit. There was plenty of good news in the Bulldog camp. Luke Beveridge won his second consecutive coach of the year. And Matt Suckling has been declared fit to feature in the final, meaning someone will miss out. Jordan Ruffhead is also expected to recover from his eye bleed in time to play against the Swans. Jake Ten, QT News. Time now for a look at the weather. It was the last chance of sun today before possible storms on the southeast tomorrow. A look at the temperatures. Brisbane reached a top of 28. The Gold Coast sunny at 25. 27 degrees on the Sunshine Coast. Slightly hotter at Ipswich with 29. Around the nation tomorrow and it was wet and it's wet for most of the country. A minimum of 14 degrees in Sydney. Canberra a top of 11. 12 to 15 in Melbourne. Storm force winds and severe weather for Adelaide tomorrow at a top of 13. The only sunshine in Perth at 19 degrees. The forecast for Queensland and Mount Isa will reach a top of 27. Cairns slightly hotter at 31. 30 for Townsville, 18 to 26 in Rocky. Brisbane and Longreach, 23. The outlook for Brisbane, a possible storm tomorrow reaching a top of 23 clearing up on Friday and Saturday. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.